Well, good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live. It's coming to you from our news hub here at Adesawi Kanda in Accra. I am AC Benewa Oto. Let's look at our top stories coming up in the next 30 minutes. And James Opon Bueno has been confirmed as the substantive Inspector General of Police, IGP, despite passing the retirement age of 60. Chief Justice Sofia Kofu has called the bluff of prospective law students and the general public saying uh, the General Legal Council will not compromise on high standards. Coming up in business, the 2018 National Insurance Commission report shows insurance underwriting is declining, passing, uh, posing a threat to survival of the industry. And on the international front, thousands have taken part in unplanned protests in Hong Kong after territory's government announced a face mask ban uh, which came into effect at midnight. So those were the top stories. Uh, let's look at the details now. And James Opon Bueno confirmed as IGP has been acting as a boss of the police hierarchy since the retirement of David Asante appeared to earlier this year. Despite passing the retirement age of 60, his confirmation suggests he will be given another contract extension to serve as a substantive IGP. It will be recalled that he was given a one-year contract extension when he served as the deputy IGP. James Opon Bueno is an alumnus of the University of Ghana and the Ghana School of Law. He was called to the bar and enrolled as a member of the Ghana Bar Association in 1984. Two years, that's 1986 to 1988, before he started his career. With the Ghana Police Service in 1988, he, was, he worked as a legal officer at the legal department of the Agricultural Development Bank in Accra. He did two years at the Ghana Police Training School and the Ghana Police Academy, where, uh, which included fieldwork at the Accra Central Police Division, graduating in 1990. During his time with the Ghana Police Service, he has held several command and uh, staff positions, including Chief Staff uh, Officer to the Inspector General of Police, that's between 1990 and 1996. Director General Welfare, uh, Director General Human Resources, Regional Command, Director General Legal and Prosecutions, and Deputy IGP. So between 1996 and 2000, James Opon Bueno uh, was the senior legal officer at the National Police Headquarters, where he advised the Ghana Police Administration on matters of law on both criminal and civil. He directed and supervised investigations by giving legal advice on case filed at both investigations and prosecution levels. Well, that's rich experience and congratulations to him. Let's do uh, other news. And Chief Justice Safaya Kofu has called the bluff of prospective law students and uh, the general public saying uh, the general legal council will not compromise on high standards addressing a 2019 call to the bar she however assured students plans are underway to build a larger campus away from central Accra funding for which will be captured in the 2020 budget the call to bar ceremony enrolled some 305 lawyers into the legal profession. Chief Justice Sophia Kufu stressed the new infrastructure would enable the law school to admit more deserving students. Plans have been made for the creation of a new and larger campus away from the hustle and bustle of central Accra. But however much available space is increased, the GLC will never relent on its commitment to assurance of production of quality lawyers through observation of the highest standards. An award-winning graduate, Kafui Kwashiga, was optimistic the new infrastructure would help increase admission into law school. At the current state of the bar is not really the best due to the conduct of, unfortunately, too many members. 
disturbing increase in the number of disciplinary complaints brought before it against lawyers, especially younger ones. The root cause of these complaints is lack of professionalism, evidenced by perfidy, cupidity, disloyalty, indiscipline, and an overweening thirst to get rich quick. The Chief Justice cautioned new lawyers against corrupt practices, stressing a disturbing increase in disciplinary complaints was a result of a new get-rich-quick mentality among junior lawyers. It's a step in the right direction because it allows for more people to be admitted, more people who pass. So, notwithstanding the fact that it will increase the capacity of the law school, the students still have to pass the, the exam. So there's that you know, issue about passing the exam. The back of a similar failure in the Ghana bar exams a few months ago. We don't want any uh, rubbish and this baller baller uh, plastic in our country. Well, now let's focus on our plastic waste campaign and let's look at what uh, people are doing to ensure that we dispose of our plastic waste appropriately. And after witnessing a flooding incident four years ago as a result of drain clogged with plastic waste, a 54-year-old dressmaker, Rose Abibu, resolved in her to ensure plastic waste is properly managed. For the past three years, she has been combining her job as a dressmaker with the sale of used sachet water. Rose Abibio has been operating this dressmaking shop, which is close to Media General's Connect FM, for the past three years. Apart from her dressmaking, she also sells confectionaries. She recalled four years ago when she witnessed a flooding incident in which the victim lost properties running into thousands of Ghana cities. After that sad spectacle, she resolved to ensure plastic waste is managed properly. For the past three years, she has been collecting sachet from the ice water she sells at her shop. According to her, she encourages customers to dump used sachet water in the bag she has hand close by. I've told them when there's water not being put, na seni pakono udi adi na odoto ona water not na onfa adi na mbo bo ano kufia na odato na bolem. I'm encouraging all ice water sellers to get a container to collect used sachet water and sell it off. She later gathers them at one point and calls for it to be picked up. Rose told us the profit she gets from selling the sachet water waste is used to buy her sachet water. She encouraged shop owners to emulate her example, stressing that this will go a long way in ensuring plastic waste is controlled. You know, all you were at the same time, so I could go to no suit or not or the no got a number. Plastic pollution is a threat to our environment. Controlling plastic waste is the way to go. All iced water sellers should get a container to collect used sachet water and sell it off. They would make money from the proceeds. Due to this practice, the surroundings of Rose Abbeville's shop is always clean and free from plastic waste. And in a related development, some students of the Bogotanga Girls Senior High School in the Upper East Region are putting plastics into good use by turning it into a decorative piece. The students who are members of the Environmental Club on campus use proceeds from the sale of used sachet water to fund their environmental friendly projects. Here's a report by Tanko Mohamed Rabiu. The members of the Environmental Club have decorated their school's administration block with 300 painted plastic bottles filled with sand. Explaining how they embark on the project, the members of the club said they pick and sell used water sachet and sell it in bulk to a buy in Bogatanga. They later use the proceeds from the sale to buy materials and the equipment needed to decorate the plastic bottles. When we are embarking on waste recycling, waste reuse, waste projects, the uh, 
you don't need additional support from somewhere. The waste that we generated, you can reuse that one, you can sell that one and get money to use it on the other projects. The leader of the club, Nabari Mary, outlined some of the benefits of using the plastic bottles in decorating the campus and its environmental impacts. I think using plastic waste to decorate our listen, camp, uh, environment, it will help eliminate the number of plastic waste in the environment. Well, if this project is emulated in all schools in the Bogatanga municipality, the plastic pollution would reduce drastically. any uh, rubbish and this baller baller uh, plastic in our country. Parliament is considering pushing government to initiate construction of liquid and solid waste plants in every region. After a tripartite committee tour of some landfill sites, members of Parliament also advocated the establishment of a dedicated common fund to solve the sanitation menace. Statistics available indicates that the country generates 1.7 billion tons of garbage annually, but not all are collected and sent to designated dump sites. Lack of technology, coupled with inadequate landfill sites, have compounded the situation. A tripartite select committee of parliament comprising local government, works and housing, and environment embarked on a three-day tour to some landfill sites in Accra, Kumase, Tamale, and Takrade to access the state of landfill site. The delegation observed most landfill sites have been mismanaged owing to lack of investment in technology. We were prompted by the fire disaster that occurred at the Kuhn landfill site. We saw a very, very critical situation in Kumase. With the solid waste site was very, very bad. But when we went to a liquid waste, it was worse. In fact, the liquid wave was virtually being dumped at a pond which is leaking into other river bodies just close by. Ranking member of the local government committee of parliament, Edwin Neil and Tevandapoy, indicated setting up a common fund for the construction of a solid and liquid waste plant in all regions will be crucial in addressing the phenomenon. If the government really wants to resolve this problem, this is an, a national emergency and it must be treated as such. For the first time, this is not political. We all agreed that this is an emergency and we must make the emergency call to the speaker, to the government, so that this issue will be resolved. He called for support for local waste management firms. And one of the recommendations I believe seriously has to do with financing, and that is basically the problem. Thank God we have a company that have come in and adopting the best practices elsewhere in the management of waste. I think government should encourage that company. No matter what issues we have with this one group, they've, they've initiated something that government cannot resist. Chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Works and Housing, Nana Amwako said attitudinal change will do the country good. If you go to a village, nobody wants to do communal labor. You throw things anyhow. And this is causing the government and taxpayer a lot of money. So we also have to look at, it's not change, how we do business. We also want to help our local, you know, indigenous people to get into business of, you know, sanitation. But if the person who is in it is crying, who will come and join him? Other members of the delegation called for collective efforts to improve on waste management. We always write the best way to dispose of industrial waste or not is to recycle. JSS is in their syllabus. The best way to throw off waste is to recycle. So we chew it, memorize it. Now we are leaders. Let's recycle the thing and we are there. You go and learn the things where you come as a leader, you can implement. Oh, no. 
Away from sanitation, let's look at matters arising from the uh, CSE. And the minority in parliament has described the controversial comprehensive sexuality education as moral and cultural terrorism on the country's sovereignty. Speaking at a news conference in parliament, minority leader Harun Idrisu said the gay community is actively behind the much talked about comprehensive sexuality education enshrined in the country's new curriculum for basic schools. The minority says it will resist any attempt by the Kufado-led government to impose homosexuality and lesbianism on Ghanaians. There's more in the following report. For the minority, President Kufado's earlier interview with Al Jazeera affirms his preparedness to force gay and lesbian rights on Ghanaians. Minority leader Haruna Idrisu said the NDC knows the stance of the Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Quay, former president Ajakum Kufo, among others, on homosexuality. But same cannot be said of President Akufuado. It is most shocking that the president who carries himself as a Lord builder of the cathedral can engage in this incongruous behavior. And another point, you are promoting what the Bible, whether Asian or one, will not accept in the books of the Lord. This incongruity only you can explain the confused states to which you are leading the country on this matter. Meanwhile, the president, Nana Dodanko Kufado, is expected to speak on the controversial Comprehensive Sexuality Education, CSE, program. The Information Minister, Kojo Apone Nkrumah, who made the announcement on this, uh, his Twitter uh, page said, President Nana Kufado will this weekend address the faith-based organizations on the fear that the uh, pro-LGBT teachings will soon find expressions in Ghana's school. we we'll take a break here. Stay with us. More news coming up. And now to business. The 2018 National Insurance Commission report shows insurance underwriting is declining, posing a threat to survival of the industry. At the 2019 Educational Conference and Annual General Meeting of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Ghana, Deputy Insurance Commissioner uh, Kofi Ando encouraged underwriters uh, to do proper underwriting in order to save the industry. Insurance underwriting involves measuring the risk exposure and determining the premium that needs to be charged to ensure that risk. Underwriters decide how much coverage the client should receive, how much they should pay for it, or whether even to accept the risk and insure them. According to Deputy Commissioner of Insurance, Kofi Ando, it is critical that the industry players go back to the basics in order to sustain the industry. It's a very worrying situation. We need to be sure that the money in the common pool is enough to pay the claims and the expenses. And that is the only way the insurance companies will be strong to, to do that. We are going to have some of the strategies that we can use to make sure that we, we keep a hand on the expenses especially so we can make some, some profit from our primary um, business, which is underwriting. President of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Ghana, Reverend Asante Mafo Ahinkura, indicated that professionalism should not be sacrificed because of competition. Unfortunately, we call competition because once you look over your head and realize that your colleagues are, are getting all the premium and because they are lowering the prices, you want to want to lower yours. We want to take a critical look at the processes once again. There are principles that underline that activity. And so that is what we want to assure ourselves that are we re really doing what is right? And we are taking a cue from what is happening elsewhere. You may innovate, you may do new things, but principles don't change. That is what helps organizations survive over the time. He noted proper underwriting will help the industry to move away from one policy, one premium fits all situation. What is a lazy way of underwriting where you pull everything together? When I came into the insurance industry, as a matter of fact, we had a rating manual, um, a manual that was like you follow those steps. Um, 
unfortunately in the age where we say we have computerized rather we have a situation where they know we know what are the facts and yet we don't use them and so we we, we know what it takes to do the right things it's not like we've been trained we'll take a break here stay with us we'll be right back Let's now do international news and look at happenings in Hong Kong where uh, thousands have taken part in unplanned protests in Hong Kong after uh, the territory's uh, government announced a face mark ban uh, which came into effect uh, at midnight. Chief Executive Carrie Lam evoked a colonial era emergency law in a bid to quell months of anti-government unrest there. Uh, the ban comes after an escalation of violence during protests on October uh, 1 when an office officer shot a demonstrator. Uh, according to reports on Friday, uh, a 14-year-old had been shot in the leg and he is reportedly being treated at uh, a hospital in uh, a serious condition. So these are happening uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, we'll be doing business and uh, we'll be doing entertainment in a moment. And in entertainment, former musical president Bais uh, Osei Kofo, a.k.a. Obo, has been reacting to rumors that he may soon announce plans to go into politics. He spoke to Owusu Warai. Born by Sose Kufo, the native of Draso has been doing a lot of philanthropic work lately under the ambit of the Christiana Ado Memorial Foundation, which operates within the Asantia Chim South area, Obo has been giving back to society and impacting the youth through empowerment projects. Aside supporting education, the musician has waged a strong campaign to instill the spirit of communal labor in the people and rid the area of filth. Many who genuinely see Obo as a change maker have saluted his philanthropic gesture Others, however, hold a strong opinion that gestures are politically motivated. Your philanthropic work, yep. is it politically motivated? I've constantly been passionate about using my fame, using my music, using my leadership skills to make society a better place. And so if by me doing that, you call it politically motivated, of course, then it is. Politics is a decision that one has to make after several consultations and I haven't concluded all my consultations I need to make before I would say that I'm, 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 I'm dipping into that turf. But has the idea of contesting the Asantia Chem South parliamentary seats crossed a boy's mind yet? As at now, as at this interview, uh, as much as things crop in my mind. I haven't put anything pen on paper. I haven't stamped it in my head. They are just thoughts that have come in my head that hey, maybe if you consider leading in a capacity, in a political capacity, it will help. Either than just leading in a social intervention capacity. But these what are all thoughts. What will make Obor take that definite decision? That no, I think it's time. It also take the leading of, of God. I have always responded to the call to lead. And so, uh, if it becomes very clear and I feel this is what God wants me to do, and this is what people that I am with also want me to do, the voice of the people is the voice of God. Why keep it away? I, I, think, I think I can be a great leader. <laughs> And that's it for Midday News. My name is AC Benewa Otu. Coming up next is um, Web Falong, Norm Falong. Enjoy the program.